In this lesson, we shall focus on the shooting method. As it was asked in November 2023, please, this is what we are following, the sequence of the questions in this paper. And then we shall obviously look at additional things, but at least this paper will be exhausted in our series of discussions um, as our primary objective. And uh, consider the, uh, the boundary value problem given, where we have y double primed equals y plus x. y at 1 is y at 3. Uh, yeah, y at 1 is 1, y at 3 is 2. Solve this system over the interval 1 to 3 by using the shooting method. We have a perfect opportunity to learn this method. Um, by and large, it comes in all the papers. So use the Euler method with delta x equals to 1. So you're going to use the Euler method with delta x equals to 1. Yeah? The, the Euler method. What do you mean by Euler method? By Euler method, we mean Taylor of order 1. Taylor method of order 1. Okay, sorry. By the Euler method, we mean provided, obviously, we're looking about the modified Taylor, but yeah. Uh, Taylor method, Taylor method of order one. So this is what you call Euler method. Right, without um, any delay, we start by looking at what we need to do here. We, we convert the fact that this one is second order, we must make it first order. And so to make it first order, we let we simply let z be equal to y primed. Simply let z be y primed. Why do we let z be y primed? Okay, we let z to be y primed because we want to convert the second order to a first order equation. Uh, by doing this, uh, this yields, right, this uh, yields uh, the following. What does it yield? It yields uh, the fact that uh, we shall have that our uh, y prime is z. So that z primed is what is our y? Then we put here our y. Our x is also put there as well. Simultaneously, we have a y at 1, which is 1. Okay, our oh, wide one is one. Okay, yeah, just getting familiar with this method here. Uh, some of these questions do not look very different at all. Right, so y at three is two. Okay, what have we done? We were given a system. Solve this system. So we're given a system. This was is regarded as a system of equations. And then we have now, we have converted the second order system to a first order system with the first derivatives. So good. At this point, the question we immediately ask ourselves is, because we introduced a new variable, the question is, why at one we know, why at three we know, but the question we ask and that we need to determine, we need to solve this system over the interval from one to three. So now the first question, the immediate question is, what will z at one be? We have introduced that, but why, what will z at one be in this question? That is what we ask ourselves. And we can actually be in a position to con uh, comf uh, comfortably um, actually um, solve and answer this question. So to answer the question, what is Z1, we proceed as follows. And we then say, right, 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 right. So to actually be in a position to solve this here, we proceed as follows. Right, there are a couple of things you need to take into account. And the things we take into account are the following things. Right, they are the following things. And we continue with our analysis of the question. We continue with our analysis of the questions. We continue with our analysis of the questions. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So we actually need to find Z at one. Right, so, and to do that, we need to apply. 
we need to apply, as said already here, the Euler method. So you need to apply the Euler method. Right, need to, you need to apply. Right, to apply the Euler, which is what the question said, because they said use the Euler method with delta x equal to 1 to do all these. So we use the Euler method in this case. Right, to apply the Euler method, we need the value of We need the value of z at 1. We need the value of z at 1. Okay, obviously we need to find z at 1 because we need to deal with this one from 1 to 3. So, right, we actually use uh, the... We, we use the Euler method. Right. But we know that since we don't know what the value is, we don't know what the value is, so we gas, we use the, uh, the gas technique. Right, since the value, or since this value, right, is not known. What do we do? We will make... We will make we'll make a gas. Right. We'll make a gas at its value. Right. And uh, when we do that and and see how Right, and see how close. Um, right, how close they obtained. Right, they obtained y three value. Is to be required. Yeah, is is to the how close the the obtained y three value is um how close it is to the required right to the required value to the required value and the required value is we call it d. D equals T. Right, so we attempt to do particular shootings. In the process of shooting, we actually see if we misfire or we hit the target. This is the game of this method. So now we start with guess one. So to do this, we start as follows and say, Let us take, right, let us, let us take as the first, let us take as the first gas, let us take as the first gas. Right, we take guess one to be zero. Let us take as the first guess, um, guess one equal to zero. After I've taken guess one equal to zero and solve the system. Right, and solve the system one. Okay, I'll call this one. Uh, 
and solve the system one. with with z one uh, z one equals guess one equals zero equals zero um okay yeah we take guess one and we say, okay, we guess that um, the first guess is zero and solve the system one. The system one becomes the first order system. This one we have just um, need to solve. Instead of solving the second order, we solve the first order. That's what we do. Because uh, we are using the first, we're using um, Taylor. We are using Euler, Euler method, but Euler is just tail of order one. That is why we are changing these from second order to order one. Because when they say use Euler method, they know that it's order one. So, but this one is second derivative, so it's order two. So we must make it order one. And this is the strategy we use to convert the second order system to first order. Now, because uh, Euler is Taylor of order one, so it's Taylor is or Euler is of order one. Now, let us analyze this and make sure we understand. So now, we do this. And as a consequence, what are we, what are we able to achieve? Word one. Word one is one. Z at one. Okay. Okay. Why one is one because of this. Okay. Now the question is, what is z at one? Oh, of course we guessed that it is uh, zero. So we put zero here. We're starting from one to three. Now there are things we need to recall here. Because we are using Euler. So is Yn plus 1, Yn plus Hf of Xn, Yn. This is Euler. This is Euler. So now, if this is Euler, we're going to do it now as follows. So we'd have to get a y2, but we're going to write it like this because of the notation here. So we're going to write it as y2, that just y sub 2, which is going to be a y1 plus the delta x. And then we put f x1 y1, like so using Euler, using Euler. Implication, y at two becomes y one. Okay, let, let us deal with the first y, y at one. What is y at 1? Well, y at 1 is 1. So you put a 1 here. Delta x is 1. What is the f? The f of x and y becomes the first derivative of this. But in this case, it becomes the first derivative of these. Right, it becomes the first derivative of this. So in other words, the first derivative becomes the following, yep. We remember we said y primed is that y at one is one. And then we have z primed 
is y plus x. Okay, this is the system. Okay. Right, so. So now. So now, what is this now? The F. The F we know very well. We always call it F. Like in this module, it becomes, you know, F, X and Y is the is, is Y. So it is that. So which means that it's going to be Z at 1. So you're going to put Z at 1 here. What is that at one? Right, what is that at one? It's zero. So you put one plus zero, one. Okay. Next. Set at two. So now Z at two. Z at two. So now what is Z at two? Right, we use in the same way we're gonna use our ordinary Euler. What is Euler? So Z at 2, according to this, it's going to become, you know, if this we put Z, Z. So Z2 is going to be like, if N is 1, if N is 1, this is Y2, Y1, HF, X1, Y1. Z2 becomes Z at 1. Delta X. And then we then have now the new uh, Z primed. Okay, the Z primed is Y plus X, Y plus X. So which means that now if you're gonna have this one, because it must be the derivative of this, this is for, 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 example, for example, Y primed and Y primed is that. So now here, it's Z here, according to the Euler, it's going to be Z prime. It's going to be Z prime. Z prime is Y plus X. So you're going to put Y plus X. Now, giving us Z at 2 is Z at 1. Right. So the question is, uh, what do we achieve out of these? Okay, but Z at one you already know is zero. Then you have delta X is one. Y plus X. So obviously, because this thing here it's two, and then and then this one, if it's two here, it becomes one one. So this is gonna be X one Y one, if you like. You can call it x1, y1. Now, what is x, what, what is y1? It's one. What is x1? x1 is also one. Well, x1 is the first one here. Okay, so and we add everything, the result is 2. This gives us that at 2 equals 2 by the shooting method. Okay? 
but we're not done yet because uh, we must go on. We must go uh, from one up to three for X. So now we are at Z2, but we need to get to the next, next point. Next point. So we're going to look at Y at three. Y at three. What is Y at three? Y at three according to the Euler, because we need to use the Euler method. This is the formula for Euler. There it is. Y subscript N plus one is Y sub N H F X N Y N. So, okay, we're going to use, but if we want to get, this is Y1, Y2, Y3. Okay. Now, Y3, if this is 3, which is 2 plus 1, so this is going to be 2. So it's going to be Y2, Y2, Delta X, F, X2, Y2. What is Y2? What is exactly Y at 2? So this thing here is Y at 2 plus delta X is 1. F, X2, Y2. F, X2, Y2. The F is uh, actually the, the same as this. Our F is Y primed. So it is that. So now if we are to look at so it's going to be Z2. What is Y2? One. Z2. Two. Two plus one. Three. Okay. So now we can see what we've got. Guessing that these numbers are all positive, like one, two, one up to three are all positive, and therefore we guess that the first case was what was zero. That was the beginning of the uh, of the z values. But now we actually obviously are able to see that uh, we have got the following results. We have got the following results. We have got the, fol the following result. Okay, we'll continue, please. Right, so... Let us uh, continue with our analysis of this. Then what is the meaning of this thing here? Right. Right, right, right. Right, right. So, there's a small note that we need to write here. That's a note. Note. Right. Note the order of calculations. Of calculations. Okay, we note the order of the of the calculations. How do we note the order of the calculations? We note the order of the calculations. We need we need to find both right we need to find both 
wire two and wire three. Okay, we need to find both wire two and, yeah, we're discussing the logistics here, and Z2, that, that's what we are saying here. So we need to find wire two, like we found wire two, both wire two and Z2. Before we can calculate. we can calculate. Before we can calculate wire three. Right. We don't need, we don't need to find Z3. We don't need to find Z3. This is it. We don't actually need to find Z3 because now I can be like, okay, we found uh, we found wire three. Why did we find uh, Z2? We found Z2 because we needed Z2 in Y3 in the Y3 calculation. We, wire 3 has Z2, that is why we found Z2. In particular, we need to find Y values, not just Z values. We introduce the Z, but we don't need to find Z values. We need to find Y values. But now when we find the Y values, the Y values um, have Z in them. The Y values have Z in them. Like wire 3 has Z2. Wire 2 has Z1. So that is why we hard to deal with the with the z values but with the guess method we want to guess and see if we are, we're going to hit the target what is the target the target is uh, the fact that if we start at wire 1 equals 1 then the, the the wire 3 must be 2 but even here we got that wire 3 equals equals 3 so it means that we miss we miss the target we miss fired we miss fired we did not hit the target so in the process of shooting we misfired. Now, then what do we say uh, with these things here? Right, we then continue to say the value. The value obtained, right, the value obtained. Obtained for wire three. Right, like so, was R1 equals 3, which is not equal which is not equal which is not equal to the required which is not equal to the required value Not equal to the required value two. Is not equal to the required value d equals two. Okay, so the value obtained for y equals three was r one equals three. We call it r one. We got r one equals three. We call it r one. But we're supposed to have, uh, according to the question, the initial value, the condition is y3 equals 2, so we got y3 equals 3, so which means that uh, we have uh, misfired in the process and we need to uh, guess again. This is the shooting method, so we keep guessing, and then we take the average of the, we need to guess twice, and then we take the average of the, of the guesses. Right, so therefore, right, so therefore, We need All right, oh, therefore we must All 
Okay, yesterday we looked at the modified oiler, but today we're using the oiler. So there's oiler, and then yesterday we discussed the modified oiler. And obviously it's very important to, to compare the two because they are the modified oiler is an improvement over the oiler. Right. So therefore we must make another another gas. Let us take. Let us take gas two to be equal to negative one. So we started with gas one, which was zero, and then we start with gas two equals negative one. Then we're gonna take the average of these two gases. We're gonna see how we um, um how we go about this one here. So we just take gas two equal to negative one with with now the first z1 right with the z1 okay we still always start with z1 why we start with z1 okay because z1 is going to give us z1 we need it in the calculation of y2 because there's z1 there so we must guess it now we guess With Z1 equals guess two. And then guess two is negative one. Okay, we're guessing now negative one. And we started with zero. The, the calculations, they're going to be calculations that we're going to do. The calculations are, let us look at the first one. Y1. And then we have Z1. Then we have Y2. Okay. Okay, the gas is minus one. But y at one is a one. Now we need to get y at two, but to get y at two, we use oil. Because we're supposed to use the oil method. Now this one is y n h f x y n. But obviously you can say it is y n plus one, y n delta x. You can put delta x here and then put uh, something more. F, x, n, y, n. Right, so let's continue with our interpretation. So now we have a y2. According to the Euler, y2 must be y1. But yeah, we write like this in this problem. Uh, we don't write like the way we, we, we write the algorithms for the with the Adam small thing and, and, and others. So now you have the delta x, fx1, y1. Okay. Let us see now what we're getting. What is y1? One. One. So now we have x1, y1. Okay, yeah, but we need to remember the algorithm that we have formed, the, the first order. We converted the first order to the second order. The second, we, converted, we converted y double prime to y prime. We got y prime is that. Okay. All right, so we got y prime is that. Okay, so we put y prime is that. And then we have z prime, y plus x. Okay. 
Okay. Z1 is 1. Z1. Okay, your uh, this one is white one. Yeah, white one is one. Wire three. Okay. Now this one is called F X Y. The, the 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 first derivative is called f x y, but if it is the if it is f x y, then it is z one, but z one is negative one, so you're gonna put a negative one there, like so. And then now we have one minus one giving us a big naught, like so. Then you're gonna do z two. Z at two. The question is what becomes Z at two? Okay, do we need why do we need Z at two? Yeah. Let us write uh, let me write a, a trivial step here a little bit to create to give this more context. And then say that this one is F. F is Y prime, always in this module. The y prime is z, so this one is going to be z at one. One plus one, z at one is negative one. Is negative one. So we continue. We continue. Okay, now let's deal with Z2. Z2, we're going to use our Euler as well. Euler 1. We, Euler is Taylor 1. Taylor for the 1, which gives us Z1 plus delta X. Then we have this one. Okay. So you must uh, have uh, the... So it's going to be it's going to be Z prime you're going to put here, which is Y1 plus X1, like so. Okay, which is the Z prime. Like here, we put this one is Y prime, this one. Okay, now, what is Z at 1? Z at 1 is a negative 1. Delta X is 1. Y1, X1, 1. Let's see what these things uh, give us. So it is one. Y three. Okay. Okay. We continue. We continue. Right, so we continue. Okay. Now we can get it Y3. According to Euler, let's go back to Euler to get Y3, the formula for it. So when we get Y3, it's going to be like Y2, because if 3, this is Y2. And then this one is y3 here. This is going to be 2, 2. Yeah. It's going to be, yeah. Because if this is y2, this is y2, this is y2, x2. y2. What is y2? y2 is 0. 
And then what exactly is our X2? What exactly is our X2 in this particular case? So we reason this out. We reason these out. Right, we actually obviously proceed to reason this out. So when we then say what is our Y2? Our Y2, we can see that our Y2 is a big zero. We've got it. And then we're going to put zero, zero. Our delta X is actually one. And then we deal with X1. Right, and then if we deal with our X1, what exactly are we able to achieve at this particular point? So we reason, but we reason extra, extra carefully. We reason extra, extra carefully. Getting a Y3 would give us X2, Y2. Right, so if it gives us X2, Y2, then you then say what is exactly our our Z because in this case, if we have, yeah, we have a Y, a Y2, and this, in the case of the Y, would have to be a Y prime. That's what, that's what I mean here. Okay, this is a small modification I'm have to do here. Right, there's a small modification you need to do. Because in, in, in the case of Euler, the Z, it's going to be y plus x. But the y is going to be having y primed. y primed is that. This is y is going to produce a y primed. So let me just put, I want to put f x2 y2. Right, so which means you can write more y2. Right, so we're going to write y2 here. The delta x is 1, and yeah. And then when we have the f, what is the f? f is z. So it's going to be the y prime is z, but it's going to be z2. It's going to be z2. Correct. Like this. What is y2? Y2 is zero. What is Z2? It's a one giving us a one. Good. This is so right. But Y3 must be two. So the second case of minus one did not help us because now we are still misfiring. Instead of hitting two, we're hitting one. And we continue to then say, here. Here we obtained. Here we obtained a value. A value R2. Okay, the second. The second result is R2. We call it R2 for Y3. But, but, again, right, again, it's not. It is not, it is not equal it is not equal to to d d the result is not equal to 2 and therefore and therefore we need another guess okay we are finishing the guesses but yeah this kind of problem please expect it this very one Therefore, we need another gas. We need another gas.
But this time around, we have the smarter gas, an average, an average gas. So this time, we become more modern since we are. We have. Since we have available. Okay, y'all. Yeah. Available. We have available for us. The results of two guesses. Of two guesses, we use we use the technique. The technique of interpolation. Right. Now, because we have two guesses, this time, since we have available for us the result of two guesses, we um, use we use the technique of interpolation. To make a better gas. To make a better gas. The interpolation formula is. The interpolation formula. So now we interpolate, right? Because we've already had two guesses now using the Euler and therefore we need to use uh, another, we need to make a, a smarter interpolation. And uh, this smarter, smarter interpolation uh, continues as follows. Um, this is the interpolation formula. Guess three minus guess one. Divided by D minus R1 is equal to guess 2 minus uh, guess 1 divided by R2 minus R1. Okay, this is the interpolation formula. Interpolation formula. You need to remember it because it's not given. Okay. This is the case where where G3 is the next. Is the next gas. We therefore get we therefore get guess three equal guess one guess two minus guess one. R2 minus R1. Right. So. So the value of the next of the next gas is 
Let us uh, deal with the next gas. So the value of the next gas becomes what? If it's if you're gonna use gas three, then we have gas one. You remember that we said gas one was zero. And then uh, our gas two was negative one. And then uh, we got our R1. You see, when we got when it when we performed. Guess when we got we got R1, which was three. When we did guess two, we got R2, which was which was one. All right, so this is the data that we have from the guesses and the and the results we got result one results two from the first guess the guess one produced result one which was three guess two produced result two which was one so now we plug in everything into the interpolation formula guess one becomes zero guess two becomes a negative one guess one becomes zero r2 becomes a one R1 becomes a 3. D becomes a 2. R1 becomes a 3. Right, so now we have minus 1 divided by minus 2, which is 1 half minus 1, which is minus 0.5, minus 0 0.5. This is producing a gas for us. And now the gas three is a result of the interpolation formula, another gas. But yeah, you see, you can make your own guesses, of course. This, um, you just need some two guesses and then you use the interpolation formula. But now uh, this obviously is done using the Euler method. Uh, most of the time we use the Euler method in this module, but uh, you can use other methods as well. But you see, the other methods will normally be given. If they ask you to use like runge kuta normally they will have to give you the runge kuta relations. Normally they do that. So it is something that you can obviously, you know, think about and um, sort of uh, uh, understand as you go along. But let us continue with our analysis of this. What do we want? Um, so we have guess three is minus 0.5. Minus 0 0.5. So using the shooting method, right with, with Z1, why do we start with Z1? Why? Why do we start with Z1 all the time? Because we know that we started with the fact that our Y primed is Z. Is Z. It's Z. That's what we do. Like we said, y primed is that. Okay. So if it happens that y primed is that, y at one is one. Z prime becomes y plus x. Okay. We wrote this one. I'm just writing it down. And then obviously now at this point, uh, we have uh, y3 is two, but the question is what is z81? Why do we even say what is z81? Well, you see, the reason is because of the Euler, because of the Euler method, because of the Euler method. Because of the Euler method, which means you have the following, right? Because of the Euler method, okay. What is Euler? Yn plus one is Yn. H F X N Y N, but yeah, this is first order Euler, uh, first order Taylor. 
with order Taylor. Okay, we we did examples on the Taylor method here uh, several times so, uh, for different problems. Even this one, uh, pretty much every paper has a question on the on the Taylor. So, um, I'm sure that it will be very important to make sure that uh, you recap on our previous videos. Right. So now with Z1, okay. Obviously, I mean the reasons. It is the third gas, and it is minus 0.5 from the inter interpolation formula. Right. The calculations are. The calculations are. So. Wait one. Yeah. We start. Wait one. We start again. Right. Wait one is one. So yeah, if we, we have that one. But we actually quickly switch to Z one. We don't want the Zs, but the Zs are part of the system. The Zs are part of the system. We want Y1 up to Y3 so that we can tell Y3 is 2. If Y3 is 2 from our guess, then we are done. But now we start with the Y1, but now we get the Z1. We will also get Z2, but Z3 we don't want because from Z2 we get Y3 straight and therefore we're done. We, not, we need to just check what Y3 is going to be given our guess. But you see, the guess from the interpolation formula become so exactly the following. Right, 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 right. So, right, if this is the initial guess in the um, in our Euler, we are able to analyze these, and I'm sure, therefore, that we can be in a position to get Z1 in our computation. And I'm sure, Shingi, that I'll give you a call when I'm done, Shingi. <laughs> okay, right. All right, good. So that Z1, what is Z1? Now, we need to think about what Z1 is. But we know a couple of things. We need to get Z1, but yeah, it's 0.5. It is 0.5. So we get a 0.5. Then um, this is Y1. Then we need Y2. We need Y2. Right, we need Y2. Right. Right, we continue. Okay. We continue. All right. <laughs> okay, now we had Y2. We go back to Euler, please. Euler. Euler. Y at 2. Y at 2 is Y at 1. In other words, when N is 1, you have 1 plus 1, it's 2, then you have Y at 1. But you don't write the the, the, the 1 as a subscript. Write it, write it as an argument, okay, in, in view of this question. And then uh, we have the following. All right. We continue. Right. Okay. So you continue. We continue. Right. So now, okay, you have white one. I call it yeah, white two. Is white one plus H, but this H here we call it delta X. You see, in this module we are flexible, and then now we have. F X one Y one, which is yeah, this one goes with exactly X one Y one, right? So you have the following. You have exactly the following. Okay, so, 
right so what is uh, exactly this what is this this one is our you see the way we write these things here the f primed yeah f of x and y is our y primed so we're gonna do y1 what is y1 it's one delta x okay we can put delta x it's one already It's one already. And then what is fx one way one? All right, so the fx one way one, the fxy is this one. It is just z, it is just z. But now then you have z at one. One one plus one. What is z at one? Is this minus 0. 0.5? This is like one minus 0. 0.5. What is one minus 0. 0.5? Because one times minus 0. 0.5 is minus 0. 0.5. One minus 0. 0.5 is 0. 0.5. So this is y2. This is exactly y82. Exactly y82. So we continue. All right. We continue. And we check what we've got. We could to check what we have got. We check what we have got. Okay, let us continue with our analysis. But now that we have got wire two, we must get. Y2 has Z1. That is why we had to cast the Z1 to put here. Because the, the question we ask if we introduce a new variable, what is the first value of this new variable? We just introduced that. Why, what was the objective of introducing that in the shooting method? Uh, the reason was to try and uh, actually change the second order to first order. Why did we have to change from second order to first order? Because of the Euler method. The Euler method is first order Taylor. So that's the reason. Now we have Y2. Let us get Z2. Okay, Z2 is going to be obtained the formula. What is the formula for Z2? You use the Euler. So which means that you have uh, Z2 is Z1. Delta X which is x1, y1. What is z1? Minus 0.5. So is x1, y1? Okay, so... Okay, yeah. Let us deal with a. Uh, okay, yeah. What I'm saying is, in in other words, this one here, like the y is going to have y primed, y primed is f. Z is going to have z primed. That's what we're saying here. It's going to have z primed of x one. Z primed at one. So, what is z primed at one? Z prime that one is going to be Y1 plus X1. Minus 0. 0.5 plus 1 times. What is Y1? <laughs> uh, this module is just uh, computations. You see, to finish this paper, you need to run, 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 run. You know? Right. So there's Y1, X1. And then now we're dealing with X1, which is exactly 1. Y1 is also a 1. Like this. Okay. It's 2 minus 0. 0.5, which is 1.5. Let us deal with the next uh, step, which is pretty much a final step for us. So we're going to do Z, uh, wire 3 now. But we need to check everything now. If we deal with the wire three, is it going to have Z in it, this formula? We use Euler. So wire three is going to have Y2.
plus delta x plus delta x. <laughs> then we're going to put y primed. What is y primed? y primed is z. So you're going to have z8 2. Because if it's n, n, one more. n plus 1. 2, 2, one more. 2 plus 1, 3. Okay, you watch the... Uh, here we write these things as subscripts, but here we write them as arguments. Let's continue. Okay, now I want us to examine the y2. What uh, Y2 is 0.5. Delta x, 1. Zeta 2, 1.5. 1.5 plus 0 0.5. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. This is a eureka moment because we are able to therefore conclude, therefore, that y3 equals 2, which is what we want. y3 equals 2. So we achieve something very, very precious. And we write the following conclusion. We conclude that we see. We see that the third gas leads to the third gas leads to the correct. Value. Value of y equals three. Right. The approximate. The approximate solution. to the boundary to the boundary value problem is therefore is therefore wide one Y2 Y0 Right, so this is it. The approximate solution is Y1 is 1 Y2 Y2 is, is a 0 0.5, y3 is 2, y3 is 2, y3 is 2. So we have solved this problem by using the shooting method. What did we learn from this problem? We have learned from this problem that the shooting method is a beautiful method, but it doesn't just, it's not just, doesn't go along. It is coupled with some other methods like Euler. It is coupled with the Euler method, or it can be coupled with the Runge Kutter. Right, can be coupled with the Runge Kutter. Runge Kutter is like different orders, two, three, and so on. So now let us check the next question and practice together. Let us look at what we need to learn, but also what the students in November 2023 had to contend with as questions as we prepare ourselves, uh, uh, obviously, accordingly. Let's take a look. We take a look. We take a good look. 
Right. So as we take a good look, we have a perfect opportunity to analyze the, the following uh, question. To analyze the, the following uh, question and see what we can get. Okay, let us practice uh, with this one. Okay, some of these things are um, obviously look very similar. So let us practice with this one with the other students. Uh, let's practice with this one. One. Okay, given the power series, it is in particular what we call given. The examiner would ordinarily have said that given, given the truncated, truncated power series, given the truncated power series, Given the truncated power series. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. In the chef by chef polynomials, T0, 1, T1, X, T2 is 2X squared, and so on and so forth. Economize the power series uh, twice. Okay, we're practicing here. So... If you are, we are to economize the power series, we note that we note that f of x, this becomes the solution. f of x is 1 minus x minus x cubed. So what we do is we economize We economize once. We add. We add or subtract. We add or subtract T4 suitably. Suitably scaled. Okay, suitably scaled. Right, so suitably scaled. Such that. Right. Such that x to the fourth power. Okay, such that the x to the fourth power term. such that the x to the fourth power term disappears. Disappears. Here we must add. Right, here we must add the following. Here we must add right, we must add one half to four. Okay, let us check this out. So to economize this, we look at the to economize we add or subtract t four. Why t four? Out of the chef by chef polynomials, we look at the fact that the highest degree is three. Right. The highest degree here is actually exactly a three. So we want to remove this the highest power. 
But if the highest order of the chef by chef polynomials is the fourth power, So what we then do is a uh, we actually do the following the following it's very interesting that we have exactly that okay all right. So we look at these and ponder and reason extra, extra carefully. Okay, but now we're going to look at the fact that the highest degree is cubed. Okay, I um, want us to organize our, our ideas very well. The highest uh, degree in F is the cube. So you need to look at where the cube appears and the cube appears in T3. So you're going to focus on T3 then just T4. Right, so we're going to Add or subtract T3 because that is what is going to help us. Right. Suitably such that such that the x to the fourth, x to the third power term disappears. Right. Here we must add. Here we must add okay so yeah but now we need to be very careful because what must we add right so we actually because the x to the cube here and this one and so we must uh, actually add uh, one quarter t3 Right. And if we do that, so if we do one quarter t3, uh, t3, uh, we, we multiply by one quarter this one, divide by four, it becomes x cubed minus three out of four x. And the uh, and we'll get And we'll get the economized series. The economized. We'll get the economized. We'll get the economized series. Right. So the economized series is going to be an F star. F star X. Which is F of X plus a quarter of T3 X. Which is this f of x is 1 minus x minus x cubed. But you're going to add one quarter of this, which is x cubed minus, minus the third quarter of x. So now, This one cancels out. You have minus four, minus four, which is minus seven. Which is one minus seven out of four X. One minus seven X out of four. But you need to economize twice. So we continue with the process. 
So we economize again. So economize. Economize again. Meaning you're going to add. Now we're going to remove the... Because the highest power of this one is x. So we must look at the one that is x. And then... But obviously x appears in two places, but we're going to choose this one because there's only an x term. This one is um, some higher power, so it's going to take us back um, to higher powers. So this one here is as x, so we're going to add, because this is that, so we're going to add 7 over 4 T1x. Okay. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, so we're fine. So if we do, we multiply this one by like 7 over 4, it's going to be, you know, 7x over 4. This thing is switching places. Like this. Suitably scaled. Suitably scaled. Such that. Such that the x cubed term disappears. We must add right, we must add. Okay, you are such that the yeah, what we're saying here is we added this one suitably scaled such that the accent disappears. So we must add the seven x out of four. And we'll get and uh, we will get And uh, we will get what are we going to get? All right, we'll get F double asterisk. You would remember that from what we did now, F star is one minus seven over four X. Right, one minus F star is this one. But we have already formed Seven over four t one x, which is seven over four this. So now we actually need to eliminate the x. So we're gonna put f star x. Okay, f star x. Plus seven over four t one x. What is f star x? It is 1 minus 7 over 4x plus 7 over 4, which is 1. Right, so 
we'll get this one here. We'll get this one. So we have economized the power series. The process of economizing the power series means that reducing the power, we reduce the x cubed, and then we reduce the x, and then we got the constant term. There it is. There it is. So now we have just recapped recapitulated uh, the notion of economizing the power series. But we move on to the next question. Move on to the next point. Okay. The next one is rather a bittersweet moment. These questions we are doing are not just because we just love doing these questions or anything like that, but it's November 2023, and we are trying to look at what the, the students are to contend with, and we are trying to like process the questions, make sense of the questions, but most importantly, answer the questions for 12 marks. If you get this question alone, you've already passed. 12 marks, the papers out of 100, 12 out of 100 is 12%. One question, 12%. You gone, you passed, you passed, you passed, you passed. This is it. Let us uh, deal with this question. Let us deal with this particular question. Now, to deal with this particular question, there are certain things we need to look at. Let A be this 3 by 3 matrix. Use the power method to, to estimate the eigenvalue of least magnitude than the corresponding eigenvector. Okay, both the eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector. Start with the vector one, one, and one, transpose and do two iterations. And do two iterations. And do two iterations and do two iterations okay that's two only like, let's gather some energy to tackle this one right let us gather some strength to tackle this two iterations not a lot so good here comes the ball game but the power method to estimate the eigenvalue of least magnitude, least, the smallest one. The smallest one. So now, what do we do to estimate the one of smallest magnitude? Right, because it is not, either you are dealing with the dominant, dominant, Eigenvalue. Okay, the dominant one means biggest magnitude or the least magnitude. Least magnitude. <laughs> right, this was an interesting paper. There you go. Now, I want us to discuss this and look at exactly what obviously had to be done here. But we're going to start with the 111 one, one vector. Right, 111 one, one vector. And then uh, see what uh, we need to do. And uh, try to make sense of every single bit of thing that we have got. And now, to actually be in a position to analyze these very, very carefully, we proceed as follows. Right, obviously, I mean, first things first, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Okay, we ponder on these and uh, make sure that we good. We are so good. We are so, so good. Okay, let us get started with everything. Now, the least magnitude requires us to get the inverse of this. Inverse of this. So, we must get the inverse of this. Because if we're dealing with the dominant one, then we use the matrix A. But the least magnitude goes with A inverse. So, let's deal with the inverse matrix. 
deal with the inverse matrix. So we're going to have one to one, zero to five, one zero minus one augment, one zero 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 one zero 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 one. So row two minus row one, one, two, one. Right, so. Row two minus row one. So you have one, zero, zero. Okay, now we need a one here. So to get the one there, you can just take one half row two, and then we have five out of two, zero, one half zero. Row two minus row one, zero, minus two, minus two, minus one, zero, one. Okay, plus two row two. Which is that zero. Multiply by two becomes minus five. Minus five. Okay, you multiply this one by minus two, you add to get zero. Multiply by minus two, it becomes a minus five. Minus five plus one, it's a minus four. And then, multiply this one by minus two, you add, you have a one. You multiply this one by minus two, you get a minus one, you add, minus one. Multiply this one by minus two, you add, you get a zero. Um, and then you have zero, one half, zero. And then you have zero, zero. You multiply this one by two and it becomes five. You subtract, you subtract two from five, you get a three. You multiply by two, you get a minus one. One, one. Right, so. We have this. One over three, row three. So it's minus one over three, one over three, one over three. So it is zero, one, five out of two, zero, one half, zero, one zero minus four one minus one zero. Okay, let us continue with our uh, reduction process. So now, if we take this particular matrix here and uh, be in a position to perform the row reduction, we can get the answer. Let us uh, analyze this uh, in terms of the least magnitude one. But dealing with the least magnitude, uh, we're gonna actually like we. Okay, three by three matrices of least magnitude, dominant magnitude, and also the, the intermediate magnitude. We did la that, that last time uh, there. We spent some good amount of time on this. But I want us to look at this one and looking at one, zero, minus four. That's what we wrote earlier. Zero, one, five out of two. Zero, one, one uh, zero, yeah, zero, zero, one. One minus one zero zero one half zero minus one third one third one third. Right, so now we continue. Row one plus four or three. Again, you multiply this one by four and you add. 
minus 4 over 3, 3 over 3 is minus 1 over 3. Multiply by 4 over 3, minus 3 over 3, minus, let's see. <laughs> okay, multiply this row 3 by 4. Multiply by 4, it's going to become minus 4 over 3 plus 1, which is like 3 over 3 minus 1 over 3. This one, 4 over 3 minus uh, 3 over 3, which is 1 third. Multiply by 4 over 3, you add to 0, you get 4 over 3. Good. Row 2 minus 5 over 2, row 3. So you add, you get zero. You add. Okay, this one is going to be minus five over six. Multiply this one by this one. You get minus five over six plus three, which is minus two over six minus one over three. You multiply this one by minus 5 over 2, which is minus 5 over 6. Minus 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. Which is that. Five over six. Minus five over six. One over three, one over three. Okay, this is the inverse. So if this is the inverse matrix, we have got that. If this is the matrix, then this is the inverse matrix. I want us to take this inverse matrix and make sure that it is correct. Uh, before we use it to actually estimate. So, we note that if A is this one, then the inverse matrix is minus 1 over 3. 1 over 3 4 over 3, 5 over 6, 1 over 3, 5 over 6, 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. One over three. Okay, let us uh, reason this out together. But now, first things first, uh, we need to make sure that our matrix is correct. So for a split second, I'll just be reflecting on e each entry, but also to make sure it's correct, you multiply this with that. And if you multiply A by the inverse, it must give us the 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That will confirm that the inverse matrix is the correct one. Okay, but obviously we can with Shemesh E's do that. So we have this here. I'm just pausing to check this so that uh, obviously we didn't continue with the correct matrix, but also we don't spend a lot of time just uh, multiplying matrices here because that is not what the question wants. The question wants us to uh, conduct estimates. So we actually need to uh, deal with the estimates and therefore we good. Let us check everything out. Minus one third, one third, four thirds. Five out of six minus one third minus five out of six. Minus one third, one third, one third. Good, so the inverse is correct. The inverse is super, super correct. Right, since the inverse is super, super correct, we would actually be in a position to get the following result. Let's continue now. The inverse has been confirmed to be the correct uh, uh, matrix inverse. So if it is the correct matrix inverse, uh, what then do we do with this? So we ponder on this. 
We ponder on these. We ponder on these. Right. We ponder on these. One twelfth. Okay, we are, we are going on. You're going on, but we need to process every single bit of thing carefully. We take this matrix. Okay, we know when I do two iterations, like in an exam, under, uh, under exam conditions, it's not it's not the whole day that you are the in the exams or you have minus one third, one third, four thirds, five out of six. Minus one third minus five out of six. Minus one third one third one third. So you have one one one. Okay. Let us multiply this here so you multiply this with these these with these these with that but all of them are like base three 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 like denominator three 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 so you're going to multiply this it's going to be like minus one third and one third is going to be zero giving us exactly four thirds if you multiply this with these so it's going to be exactly everything here and this one is okay you can look at it as minus two out of six which is yeah minus two out of six which is minus one third This with this is going to be minus one third, and that is going to give us zero, giving us one third. So you're going to deal with this, and then you pull out the biggest one. You pull out the biggest one. Which one the biggest one? 0 0.3 minus 0 0.3, 1.3. 1.3 is the biggest. 4 over 3 is the biggest one. So you pull out the 4 over 3, and then you have exactly a 1. If you pull out 4 over 3, then what do you put here? So that when you multiply 4 over 3 by these, you get minus 1 third. What will you put there? It appears that you can put minus 1 quarter. Let's check. If you put minus 1 quarter, you multiply, the 4 is going to cancel, and this is going to give us minus 1 third. Even here, you're going to put exactly 1 quarter, because the 4 cancels 4, giving us 1 third. Right, so we continue. Okay. We continue. Right, so if this is the case, we take so we can write this thing as 1.3333, like four decimals. One minus 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So now, We then are able to get exactly the following. We're then able to get exactly the following. Right. We're exactly able to get the following. Okay, we continue, please. So now this is the first it, uh, iteration step, and then we're gonna do the second iteration. But obviously, during the second iteration, we continue with the the use of the matrix inverse. Continue with the use of the matrix inverse. So we're going to take, okay, we remember that the inverse of the matrix A is actually exactly minus one third. One third. Four thirds. Okay, this is the inverse of the matrix. We did it together. 
5 out of 6. Minus 1 out of 3. Minus 5 out of 6. Minus 1 out of 3. The least magnitude is done with the... Is done with the a a matrix inverse. Okay, now... What is this? We take the matrix inverse that we've got. 4 out of 3. Minus 1 out of 3. Minus 5 out of 6. One out of three. One, one, one. Okay, yeah, but we used the one on one before, now we use the previous one. We use the one we've got. So we're gonna use this one. So you can use this one. One minus one quarter, one quarter. One minus one quarter, then one quarter. Okay, one minus one quarter, then one quarter. One minus one quarter, then one quarter. Good. And then now we're gonna get the answer to this. But if you do, okay, let me see if I can uh, do this one here. Okay, now, you multiply minus one by one, we get minus one third. One third by this is minus one twelfth. And then this one and this one is one third. Okay, because multiply this by this, you get minus one third, minus one twelfth, one third. Minus one twelfth. Minus one twelfth. Multiply this with these five out of six. One out of twelve. Five out of this by this is five out of what? Minus five out of twenty four. So what is this? Is 24, and this is 20, this is 2, and this is 5. And this is 13 out of 24. Right. Minus 1 third, minus 1 twelfth, 1 twelfth, minus 1 third. Right. So we continue. We continue. Okay. We pull the biggest one. Which one is the biggest one? This one is 0 0.3. Okay, we'll sh shall we out what 1 over 12 is, but, okay, this is a bit tricky. These numbers. So what, what we'll then we'll do, okay, yeah, first I need to check, we need to check the, these things. What is 1 divided by 12? Okay, we just compare these numbers. Want to see which one is the biggest one? So minus one divided by 12 is minus 0 0.0833 recurring. What is 13 out of 24? Thirteen divided by 24 is what? 0 0.5. What is one divided by three? 0.3 recurring. So the biggest one, 0.333 and so on. 
So the biggest one is 13 out of 24. You must pull out 13 divided by 24 because it's the biggest one. And then if you do that, you get the following. Okay, now we have that. Okay, so... Um, okay. All right, so thirteen divided by twenty four. Right. Okay, wait a minute. There's something I'm checking. I'm checking the uh, I'm just doing some arithmetic on the side. Just to ascertain that everything we're doing is fine and there's, there are no mistakes. Just checking, 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 and then we're gonna be right back. Just finishing. But I'm just trying to make sure arithmetic is all okay. What if when you do this, you're getting the same answers? You're not getting just some other answers that you don't want. Right. Okay, I need to check this one. I need to check. Uh, this one. I need to check this one. Right, if you multiply I think there might be a small uh, error. I think this might be 17 out of 24. And the rest are fine. But let me just cross check again. Multiply 5 out of these, which is 5 out of 6. This with that is going to be plus 1 out of 12. Minus 5 out of 24. Divide, you have 4, you have 20. Yeah, you see, that's just a reason. Because if you multiply, this is going to be plus. Yeah. So that this is going to be exactly, if you have 20 minus 5, you get 15 plus 2 is 17. Yeah. So they wanted to just check. So this one is 17. Not 13, but 17. So now I'll have to cross check. What is 17? Okay, now we are checking this one. 17. Um, and then we divide 17 by 24. How big a number is? Because we're looking for the biggest number. 17 divided by 24. Not 0.7. Yeah. 7.08. So, okay, yeah, the 0 0.7 is the biggest one, so we're going to have, pull out the biggest one. So we're going to have this one, 17 out of 24. Good. Now, if you pull out the 17 out of 24, you're going to be left with one in its place. So if you multiply this one, Minus 1 out of 3, you multiply it by 24 out of 17. 3 goes how many times in 24? Minus 8 out of 17. If you take minus 8 out of 17, you multiply it by 17 out of 24. It becomes minus 1 out of 3. Because 17 cancels, 8 goes how many times in 24? Minus 1 out of 3. So it means that, therefore, this one is minus 8 out of 17. Because if you say 17 out of 24 times minus 8 out of 17, you get minus 1 out of 3. So, okay, we're playing with the numbers. If we factor out 17 out of 24, it's like multiplying the number 
minus one twelfth. Minus one twelfth multiplied by twenty four out of seventeen, which is minus two out of seventeen. Like this. So, then you'd have exactly the following. You'd have exactly the following. Okay, y'all, yeah, we have this. Okay, this thing. With the two iterations, then we're going to do, yeah, we're dealing with 17. Okay, 17 out of 24, then we, yeah, we do uh, the estimate. Okay, 17 out of 24 is 0 0.7083. So 2 divided by 17. Minus not point one one seven six one just dealing with some decimals eight divided by seventeen not point four seven zero five like this so now We can go on and then say, after two iterations, because they said two iterations, after two iterations, we estimate we estimate the The dominant, it becomes the dominant as much as the least, but it becomes the dominant eigenvalue of A inverse as is this one is a uh, 17 out of 24, which is 0 0.7083. And the corresponding corresponding eigenvector corresponding eigenvector is x equals and write this one minus 0 0.11761 minus 0 0.4705. So now this one is the dominant one of the inverse, but we're not done yet. And then we then say the eigenvalue. The eigenvalue of least magnitude of least magnitude right of least magnitude right the eigenvalue of least magnitude magnitude uh, of A is therefore Lambda is one divided by one divided by it's one divided by v, so it's one divided by seventeen out of twenty four. Which is 
24 of 17, which is the same as saying 1 divided by 0 0.7083. Right. 1 divided by 0 0.7083. Not point seven zero eight three. Okay, you divide by these two. One divided by not point seven zero eight three. One point four one one eight. Three one one four five. Right. And the corresponding eigenvector is okay, so you are dealing with the corresponding eigenvector which becomes the this one, which is uh, minus 0 0.1176. 1. Minus 0 0.4705. Minus 0 0.4705. Yeah, is the same as the previous one. The eigenvector. Obviously, you see, the question we ask ourselves is, we have got the eigenvalue of least magnitude, because that's what they want, estimate the eigenvalue of least magnitude. But the question is, still remains, how far is this one from the actual eigenvalue? If it is 1.411, how, what is the eigen, so we need to do a, a quick check on this one. Okay, but yeah, we are finishing, but yeah, we need to do a quick check. So we're gonna go back to the roots. Right. Right. We're gonna actually be in a position to be in a position to do this one here. Okay, this one is not, it's additional to the solution. To look at the eigenvalues of the matrix, of the matrix A. Yes. Okay. Right. So we're going to look at A minus lambda I. One minus lambda two one zero two minus lambda five one zero minus one minus lambda. So in the end. So that in the end, then you have the following. Right, so you're gonna do, you're gonna expand along this. Doesn't matter. You're gonna expand along this column, positive, negative, positive. Right, getting one minus lambda, if you block this and that, you have two minus lambda five, zero minus one minus lambda. Right. Okay. Now you come to this one. So you're gonna block this and that. Two, one, Zero minus one minus lambda. 
plus one. Two one, two minus lambda then five. It must be zero. One minus lambda. This times this is two minus lambda. Minus one minus lambda. Okay, I'm just checking the eigenvalues. It's not it's not it's not compulsory because we 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 don't need these kinds of eigenvalues. We we estimate using the power method like we've done, but the answers need to be pretty much the same. So we learn this answer and the uh, uh we learn this one first in linear algebra. So we learn this one in linear algebra, but we use it here. So now yeah, we're just verifying here. Two by five gives us a ten. Minus 2 plus lambda. Okay. So this is what we get. So now, this becomes, if you multiply this with that, and then 10 minus 2 is exactly what? 8. Which is Minus 1 minus lambda. 8 plus lambda equals 0. We need to solve for this one. Now, to be able to solve for this uh, particular matrix, we need to find the eigenvalues. And the eigenvectors of this. So we're going to actually, okay, we are going on, please. There's something I'm checking about the eigenvectors of this. Right, so checking the eigenvectors. Right, so we're going to have the eigenvectors of this. Right, shall be here. Okay, yeah, we're still here. Is something I'm checking quickly, and then we shall. We're concluding. I can see the time also, etc., etc. I'm able to see all that. One two one zero two five. That. Right. Obviously, you have the, exactly this here. You see, if you multiply out everything, put out the negative, you have. 1 minus lambda, 1 plus lambda. 8 plus lambda. 1 minus lambda squared. 8 plus lambda. Minus 1 minus lambda squared. Two minus lambda plus eight minus lambda plus eight plus lambda equals zero. Just check this out. So if you multiply everything here, you'd have this and this is going to be minus two because this and this is two. This and this is minus lambda, giving us plus lambda with the minus outside. This is minus 2 lambda, it's going to be plus 2 lambda squared. This is plus lambda cubed, and it's going to be minus lambda cubed, plus 8, plus lambda equals 0. Right, so if you move these things to the other side, it's going to be a lambda cubed. Right, and then lambda cubed, and then minus 2 lambda squared. 2 lambda. Okay, y'all, we, we can assist with this. Six. Okay, good. So now if you look at this very carefully and think about what can actually be achieved out of this. Right, so you have exactly this part here. Right, so we need to be able to get the following. 
Right. Okay, we are going on. There's something I'm quickly checking here. In as far as the ordinary, the ordinary eigenvectors of these are concerned, or eigenvalues of these remain concerned. Right, so if we have x cubed, just a minute. I'm just checking uh, also my device to make sure that everything ties up here and everything balances. And then we are concluding our discussion. Minus 2x minus 6. Yeah, x cubed minus 2x cubed, uh, x squared minus 2x minus 6. Right, so if that then you would have the uh, that the eigenvalue, see, this is very, very interesting. Okay, just give a split second. Right, give a split second to... Right, give a split second. There's something I want to give as a comment for, about this matrix here. There's a general comment I want to give, but I need to actually verify everything. Um, right. I need to verify every single bit of thing I'm getting. Right, so in a, in a about a minute's time, I will verify that indeed uh, what the truth is about this matrix here in general. I don't only rely on what we've got, but um, I want to also check what uh, my calculator is going to give me in terms of the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of this before. I, I make a, a general conclusion about this matrix um, to make sure that every assertion made about it. Now, we have 1, 2, 1, first row, 0, 2, 5, second row. And then we have 1, 0. 1, 0, minus 1. Right, 1, 0, minus 1. Right, so yeah, this is an intersection I'm going to give about this particular matrix here, which is we got lambda cubed minus 2 lambda squared minus 2 lambda minus 6 equals 0. This is correct. Right, and then this is what I was saying. So there will be a couple of, there will be lambda 1 equals, or uh, so these are complex. Remember checking this out uh, some days back. So lambda 1 is going to be 3.20107. Lambda 2 is going to be minus 0 0.603506. Minus uh, 0 0.603506 plus 1.22747i. Then there's lambda 3, which is minus 0 0.603506 minus 1.22747i. Right, so with these eigenvalues, once again, we need to speak about the one of the least magnitude. So if you look at the fact that these ones would pretty much have magnitudes that uh, actually compare because they are conjugates of each other. But this one is 1.32. What would the magnitude of this one be? So for instance, the magnitude of lambda 2 is going to be the, the magnitude of lambda 3. By the Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be the square of this one minus 0.603506, you square. Right, so I said uh, the magnitude of lambda 2, for instance. It's going to be the big square root minus 0 0.603506. 1.22747 squared. Okay, so you take the square root of this. Okay. Right, so 
let us deal with the let us deal with the square root of this because so there are some complex roots. Okay, I just need to find the, the square root of this to find the estimate of this. And then we are pretty much done. So you'd have uh, the square root of minus 0 0.6 zero three five zero six you close you close and you square it plus uh, one point two two seven four seven close bracket squared you get that this one is the magnitude yeah because they're looking for the magnitude. The magnitude is 1.36780. Because they're looking about the least magnitude. So 1.36780. And then we got we got about 1.4. So 1.4 is close to is 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 near. Right. It is near 1.3. Now, because it is near 1.3, then we are able to actually see exactly that uh, our answer is indeed correct. But uh, we can see that the eigenvalues themselves, so there are two complex ones and uh, there is one uh, uh, real one. But uh, we are able to actually uh, see that indeed the power method has uh, been used uh, very well. It gave us uh, an eigenvalue of this, which is corresponding eigenvector. And obviously, we are able to see that the um, the magnitude of the one we've got is 1.36, 1. Uh, 1. which is the least magnitude. Yeah, these have the same magnitude, um, et cetera. So yeah, we are done with this question. I think we must thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit taxing, a bit time consuming, but uh, you have already seen that. It was, it, it was a bit unfair because it was a lot of marks, but Obviously, a lot of marks, but time consuming, but obviously it's, I mean, it's a lot of marks and therefore it's worth the time. It's worth the time. So, right, I want to thank you for joining us. It was awesome having this discussion, just 17 after 12. Uh, we shall obviously continue with our discussion in our next meeting and see how far we can go. But yeah, we're pushing to make sure that we exhaust enough ground for the kinds of questions that um uh the kinds of questions you'll meet in the in the uh, end of uh, end, end of the assessment right this is the answer we've got the eigenvalue we have got uh, this one here of uh, least magnitude and the corresponding eigenvector and the corresponding eigenvector thanks again for joining us until next time take care and goodbye thank you goodbye bye thank you